Hello everyone. Today I'd like to show you my inventory manager system. Um, if you've watched my other Feed the Beast videos, you'll see that I'm using this to keep my project tables stocked. Um, so here's my creative world where I've developed this. And uh, the components basically are a uh, computer craft computer. It doesn't have to be a color one, I'm just, <laughs> just using that to test it. Um, and a project table, but it could be any inventory that you want to keep stocked with a certain level of um, materials. And then this is an interactive sorter from Greg Tech, um, which is a little bit buggy. I had to work around a couple of uh, quirks with it, and I'll show you how I did that. This chest, it could just be a wooden chest, it's just to hold uh, the material that you want to keep stocked in here um, so it can remember. It's kind of like the memory. And then a retriever, which uh, this this will retrieve from your um, your basically your uh, storage system. Here I've just got three crystal chests holding uh, emerald, iron, gold, and diamond blocks. So let me just set it today so it doesn't go dark on us. Um, in reality, that will be a big row of barrels, kind of like this, uh, with pneumatic tubes underneath the barrels, so I can pull anything that I want. So, uh, how does this work? Well, the first thing you do is load up the uh, project table with uh, the materials that you want it to keep stocked. So I'm saying I want 64 blocks of emeralds, 60 iron, 32 gold, and 48 diamond. Um, not the most useful things to stock, but uh, for this test that will do. And then you basically run a program called Inf Manager. So, uh, Inf Manager and then init, uh, which initializes it. So this is what you'd run the very first time, and it will take what's in the uh, the target inventory and put it in its memory, and then retrieve it. Um, I could quite happily just uh, move these, these stacks into the memory uh, myself, and then just type inv manager. Um, so inv manager without the init parameter uh, is what you'd want to have in your startup script so that every time you logged in and the chunk got loaded it um, it started managing the inventory. So all it's done now is, uh, well all it did, I, was, I wasn't quick enough, basically it pulled all those things into its memory then it pushed them into the retriever and then it pulsed to retrieve them. So we should find them the the amounts that we want in the project table and then it puts puts the things back from the retriever into the memory. Uh, the way I have it set up is you need um, you need f the full stack. So I could actually do a multiple so I could maybe you know multiply it by two or four um, so I could have you know a quarter or a half the amount of resources in here. Um, that would be a fairly simple modification uh, to the program if you wanted to do that. Um, but basically, let me let me explain how this works and what these extra pipes are for. So, when it needs to retrieve something, the um, this interactive sorter will pull whatever it needs to retrieve and the, the amount that it needs to retrieve into itself and then put it into the retriever. It will then uh, the computer will then which controls everything will then pulse the retriever. Um, and once the items have arrived, then the interactive sorter will uh, basically it checks every um, every second. Uh, once it detects that you've got you've actually received all the materials that you've asked for, it will then pull out of the retriever um, the materials it put in. And it'd be great if you could just put it straight back in the memory chest, but you can't because um, the the bug with the uh, interactive sorter is it will overwrite stacks in uh, in inventories that you put into, which is why I've got the retriever um, going into the target inventory with a, a pneumatic tube, and then what the interactive sorter does is it pulls out of the retriever, works fine, and then basically puts whatever it pulled out into this. Um, pipe here which leads to the inventory. So there's a few uh, timing delays in the program just to allow uh, the materials to actually make their way to their the destination. Um, yeah it's a pretty nasty bug I hope it gets fixed but um, this program works around it quite nicely. Uh, so yeah let's actually see it working so if I look in here let's take half the stack of diamonds and um, 
basically it's set to check at the moment every five seconds uh, you can set that in the top of the program I'm probably going to have mine set to every 10 seconds so it'll pull the diamond there uh, we go we've got 48 again and then it puts the the diamond back in the memory tra memory chest so um, another interesting thing is when you're actually working at a project table uh, you don't really want to have it uh, trying to restock because if let's say I'm I'm making something I take the whole stack of gold and I want to sort of make a certain shape in here um, I don't want it thinking oh I've got to get 32 gold because actually let's say I use up all these on whatever I craft um, it actually only needs to get uh, six so um, when you stood on the pressure plate I have that uh, disable the checking um, so if I pop back off it should carry on checking and it should go and restock the six gold uh, taking up to 32 there you go um, so that's basically how the system works um, I will put a link in the description uh, to the uh, the Lua script that you run on the computer graph computer to control all this um, hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory uh, I don't want to go through exactly how that works in this video. It'll probably just put everyone to sleep. Um, yeah, but if you're not if you're not worried about how that works, um, the only other things you you need to know is you can actually set different facings. So if I just stop this for a second, um, so if we start it, uh, if we start it without the initial init parameter. Um, that's just basically going back to uh, you know, re restarting the program without resetting the memory. So what it's saying here is it's made a connection. So the inventory that it's managing is mapped to the top, uh, the retriever is mapped to the back, and the buffer is mapped to the right, and the buff pipe um, is mapped to the bottom. So you can actually reconfigure this at the top of the, the Lua program, um, but you'd actually have to modify the script to do that. Um, the other thing is, uh, if you make this facing another way, so I've got mine, you, when you're facing the project table, you're facing south, and that's the default. But you can actually specify a different facing. Um, so what you do is um, you go in manager, and then um, east. And that would set it up um, to run in an eastward direction. It just reconfigures all of the numbers that uh, you use with the interactive sorter. Um, hopefully that's self-explanatory. I haven't actually used that yet. I wrote it into the script, but I haven't used it. I will um, when I actually activate these in my um, my storage system on the Feed the Beast server. Uh, the only last thing to mention is I've used this um, red alloy wire. You don't have to at all. You can and I'm not going to to be actually in the feed the B server. It's very simple just to uh, run redstone and if you just put a cover on top of that pipe it'll go straight into the retriever just like that. Um, so there you have it. Uh, leave any questions in the comments and I'll try and answer them and um, I look forward to actually enabling these um, on my uh, feed the beast server, but currently it's actually um, not available waiting for the update to the Minecraft pack So hopefully it'll be available in the next week or so and I can get back to work Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye